The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We welcome everyone to worship this morning, those here in the sanctuary, those worshiping with us from home. We are so glad to be able to join our hearts and our minds and lift our voices to God in worship together. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. The poinsettias that adorned our sanctuary for Christmas were so beautiful, and we had an abundance of them. We have a couple of dozen left over, and we would love for them to find good homes. So that includes all of you. So down in the office area, you will see a lot of poinsettias in between the glass doors. If you're from home, worshiping from home, and you want to come by the church, please take a poinsettia or two home to enjoy for this season. Today is the Sunday that we are celebrating Epiphany. It's traditionally the day that we remember the Magi, the wise men, coming from the East to worship the newborn baby Jesus. It's also a day that points us to all of the ways that God manifests God's self to us, the way that we know God in our life today. So we are celebrating those parts of our faith together today. It is a communion Sunday. If you're worshiping with us at 1015 right now, we encourage you to grab some bread or crackers, juice or wine. Have those nearby so that you can participate in the sacrament. If you're here in the sanctuary, there are trays with little packets, both regular and gluten-free. Our Christian education classes are going to resume next Sunday at 9 o'clock. After worship today, we're going to spend a little bit of time putting our Christmas decorations away. So if you can stay for a few minutes and help with that, that's terrific. We're actually going to need a little muscle to help us after we've undecorated the Christmas tree, get the Christmas tree out to the curb. So think about that, friends. Who's got some muscle they can share in getting the tree out today? Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise in body and spirit and join me in the call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Let us worship God together.
in the light of Christ, we see the shadows of our world and of ourselves. So trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins before God and one another, first in unison and then in silence. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have given light to the world in Jesus Christ, but we have preferred to live in darkness. Your justice protects the weak and the distressed, yet we seek the shelter of privilege and power. Your righteousness redeems the poor and the needy, yet we seek the status of wealth and possessions. Your peace upholds the oppressed and the defenseless, yet we seek the security of weapons and retribution. Forgive us our sins and lead us to true repentance that we may trust you in all things. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. This is the good news. Christ is the light of the world. He brings light and life and healing to all. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Spirit of God, in the proclamation of your word, reveal to us the hidden mystery of your love in Christ and strengthen our faith that we may approach you with boldness. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men, from, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now is our time with the children. And so I invite children of God everywhere, from wherever you're worshiping, here with us in the sanctuary or somewhere online, I invite you to lean in a little closer and come and listen to another version of this story about the three wise men. This is a children's Bible that helps us learn stories. Um, oh, I left this up here. Let me bring my other things over. Pardon me. Let's try that again. I just read that scripture story from, from our Bible. And this is a children's Bible that helps us learn these Bible stories. So now, let's hear that story about the three wise men. Far across the desert, wise men watched a new star burst into the night sky and knew it was a sign from God that a great king had been born. They followed the star to Jerusalem. Where can we find the newborn king, they asked. King Herod was shocked to hear about a new king. Will he take my throne, he wondered. Come back to me when you have found the child, he told the wise men. So they continued on their way, following the star to Bethlehem, where they found Jesus in his mother's arms. The wise men bowed down to the baby king and offered him gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. But an angel warned the wise men not to tell Herod about the child. So when they left Bethlehem, they traveled back by a different road. This children's Bible was written by a wonderful man named Desmond Tutu, and he died last week on December 26th. While we are sad, saddened by his death, we give thanks for the wonderful life that he led, for the gift of his life. 
Desmond Tutu lived in South Africa, around the world. Here we are, and Desmond Tutu lived in South Africa. He was an archbishop, which means that he was a very special leader in the church in South Africa. He taught the world about peace and justice, kindness and fairness. He led by example, especially to take gentle care of the earth. Most of all, he shared with us the message of Jesus Christ, a message of great love. Let us pray. Dear God, please protect us when we are in danger and guide our way like a star in the sky. Thank you, God, for kind leaders who help guide our way, like Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Thank you for his love and laughter. We pray especially today for his family, for their comfort in grief. Amen. Let us now sing together hymn 151, We Three Kings of Orient Are.
Our second reading this morning comes to us from the Epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each year on the first Sunday in January, we celebrate Epiphany. And we've been for the last five or six years celebrating with Epiphany stars. Each Epiphany, we receive a new star. The last couple of years, they've been mailed out in December because of COVID, but we receive one for the coming year. And on this day, we reflect back to see if the word on our star has led us to any new light, any new insight. It's not magic. It's just a way to open ourselves to the Spirit in a new and different way. So I will share briefly something from my Star Word this last year. And if there are any of those here in the congregation that would like to share, I invite you to come to one of these two stands and speak into the microphone so that everybody will be able to hear you. Um, and if there aren't folks who want to do that, that's okay too. We can reflect a little bit. I have some guiding questions that we can use. So God is good. We trust the Spirit, and we'll see how it goes this morning. Um, my star word this last year was appreciation. It's actually a second go-round on that word for me. That was the first word I got several years ago. But in December, as I was thinking about what kind of appreciation, what that word might mean to me, I really have attached it to the idea of growing appreciation. And 2021, I feel like I've had a growing appreciation in two ways, maybe a lot more, but one is how hard it is to feel unsettled. Like in 2021, I anticipated that it was going to be so much easier and better than 2020. And what I've discovered or have this growing appreciation of is that the way our world is right now, it can feel like you're making progress and then you step back and it doesn't feel like progress. And just that unsettledness is hard. It's hard not to be able to project where we're going to be or what things are going to be like. Um, so I have a growing appreciation of how hard it is to feel unsettled. And I know, along with that, is that there are people who, for other reasons beyond COVID, feel unsettled all the time. And so my empathy and my sympathy for those who live lives that are very unsettled has grown this year. I also have a growing appreciation for our connectedness 
on our dependency on each other, how meaningful it has been to be able to connect with people through emails or phone calls or when we're able to be together in person, I just have a greater appreciation. I don't take that for granted. And I also am growing in my appreciation of how that connectedness isn't just with the people we know or the people we live close by with, but that connectedness is really global. And I'm much more aware of that and have a greater appreciation for that now. So that's me. And now it's your turn. If any here have something, I encourage you, don't be shy. Come on up. Um, this is our turn to share with each other if there's anything you want to share from this last year. I see Barbara. Thank you. I'm going to tilt this down so that you can be heard. George, is it all right? Is it okay? Just stand as close as you can. That'll be great. Thank you. My word, uh, my word was dreamer or dreaming. And the first thing that came to my mind was dreams. Oh, I'm sure many of you have had dreams that you've woken to and wondered why in the, why, why in the world I dreamed about that. But then I do, I think my, this dream that I had began as a little child. When I was little, I loved to play school. And I used to sit out on the porch and I'd have all my students uh, around me and I would tell them uh, what they had to do. And if they were naughty, I'd say they'd have to take a time out. <laughs> But anyway, I suddenly remembered that when I graduated from high school, uh, they put something in the yearbook that said, what do you wish for most after you graduate from high school? And my answer was to have a room full of kids. Well, I didn't want to have them give birth to a room full of kids, <laughs> but I did want to have I did want to teach school, and lo and behold, I graduated and I, high school, and then I graduated from college, and my dream came true, because my first job was a kindergarten teacher at, uh, in Lawrence Township, and then after I had children and uh, took off some time, I was able to become a director of a nursery school and what could have been better? Because I could teach school and I could also use my Christian bringing up. So my dream did come true. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yes. Okay, if you want to speak, let's use this lectern. This mic's working a bit better today. Hope has one. Can you hear me? So when I got my Epiphany Star home, um, the label had fallen off. So I had no word at all. And it really bothered me. <laughs> I was trying to see, well, where's David's? But his label, because I was going to take it, it fell off as well. So, no lit. So anyway, but it has had a meaning because I think this year the fact that there was no word there meant that I couldn't try to stop things from happening or control things. I had to just take what happened and problem solve. And so having no word didn't give me any clue. And it's been quite a year, but it's it's made me grow a lot. And so um, I guess that that was God's way of saying, you're going to have to go without any words this year. <laughs> so that's what happened. Thank you. Hope. Yes, Barbara. If you can use 
this one? The microphone's better on this one, they say. Thank you. My word for the year was explore. Recently, I again joined the Bible study I joined the Bible study group that were doing all sorts of studies. I wanted to explore something new, something different within our church family, and I found my answer. We have been studying about prayer. We've been studying about the beauty of arts with Rembrandt, and we're more going ahead with more study. I never thought I would want to explore but I am so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you, Barbara. Bob? Sure. Well, I put my hand in the basket last January, and I came out with this one here. It was breath. Well, I didn't know what I would talk about when I saw that word. A couple of weeks ago, I got in the mail an um, Advent letter, and they had a star in it. And this time, I got this word. It was righteousness. So I thought about that a little bit, and uh, it reminded me of one of my favorite hymns at this time of the year. And it was written, it's number 134. It was written by one of my favorite hymn writers, Isaac Watts. And the music was done by George Frederick Handel. And verse 4 of Joy to the World says, He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. And... Uh, here we are in the two days into 2022, and, and uh, the, the, there's a transition from out with the old and in with the new from 2021 and 2022. So is, is 2022 going to be different than 2021? We all hope so. But uh, we live in a world that is, uh, it has all kinds of problems and confrontational. And I just was thinking about this word righteousness. I... I went to Webster, and Webster defines it as acting in accordance with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin, morally right or justifiably, ari and arising from an outraged sense of, just, ju of justice or morality. And I just strive that we should all, in 2022, be live in a fairer and kinder world and with peace and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes, Allison. Well, I guess last year the words were, light, were on light blue stars, and I'm not sure what I did with my light blue star. So I recycled an old one, which was yellow. So I think that was pre-pandemic, because the word was health. And I remember when I got it, I thought, uh-oh, why am I getting health? And at that time, I was only concerned about my own personal physical health. Well, now here we are in 2022. Health to me, the word health brings up much broader definitions than my own physical health. It incorporates my mental health, my spiritual health, but also our collective health as a church family, as a community, as a nation, as a world. So. The word health really took on much greater meaning for me in the past few years. Thank you, Allison. Laura, um, can you get her George from the left mic? My mic here okay? Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'm among the people that couldn't find my star from last year either. So one of the ones that I got in the mail most recently was understanding. And that's a pretty simple word. Um, it's on many levels. 
Um, we can all have an intellectual understanding of something, um, but I chose to think of this as an understanding, as my mom would always say about the, you know, going a mile in someone else's shoes. And I think of understanding in this way as, you know, with a, a special depth and richness and soulfulness, and that when we understand, when we truly understand, then we are compassionate human beings. And if we have compassion, we, it's beyond understanding, it's a connection and it's a love. And to me, this is the strongest bond that I can think of to godliness and, and peace. And so uh, I, I thank my star for bringing this to light for me. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Well, most of you, if not all of you, received a star in the mail. If you didn't receive uh, a new word, they're on um, little pieces of wood this year. So that's a little different this time. If you didn't receive one and would like to have one, just contact the church office and we'll be sure that you get a star word. But the, some guiding questions for you as you receive your word. Uh, what are your primary associations with the word? Do you identify this word in relationship to God, in relationship to others, in relationship to yourself? Are there places in your life where you identify a need for this gift? Are there times in your life when you remember being blessed with this quality? Give thanks to God for those times. And have there been times when a lack of this quality in your life caused you or others around you pain? Ask for God's healing grace. So those are questions for our new word for 2022, and we'll gather next year and share our stories. So keep praying, keep open to all of the ways, not just with stars, but all of the ways that God can speak to us through scripture and prayer, through art, through other people, through the newspaper, so many ways that God can reach out to us. Amen. Like shepherds and magi long ago, we are drawn to Christ and his light. We come offering our very lives, our time, our talent, and our treasure. If you are worshiping with us in the sanctuary, you may place your financial gifts in the offering plates where you picked up a bulletin either before or after the service. If you are worshiping with us from home, you can support our ongoing ministry by mailing a gift to the church or by going to our website and using the online giving tab. Thank you for setting aside an offering as a generous response to God's grace in Jesus Christ. And may God be honored by these gifts and bless our ministries of faith, community, and service. Glorious God, you led wise people to seek Jesus, your holy child, born of Mary. Overjoyed in the presence of his radiant light, they knelt down at the infant's crib and offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We too offer our gifts in gratitude, reverence, and thanksgiving for the birth of your child, 
whom you called to lead the world into fullness of life. Receive and bless this offering as a joyful sign of the boundless love and abundant life we are called to share in Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time to be together to worship with brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. We thank you, O oh God, for all of the ways that you draw us together and nurture us in love of you and love of each other. At the beginning of this new year, God, we thank you for all the ways that you covered us in your love and grace in the last year, for your presence, both seen and felt and unnoticed. We give you thanks. We ask your blessing upon each of us and upon this world that you love. May we see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. God, we lift before you our world. You love the people of every nation and know the struggles and the triumphs of each one. We pray for wisdom as we face a common threat of COVID and the Omicron variant. We want so much for the suffering to end. Guide our leaders as they work together with their counterparts around the world. Give courage and energy and strength to those who care for the sick and for all who work in public health. We pray not only for those who are sick with COVID, but with all sorts of other illnesses and conditions. We pray for healing of bodies, minds, and spirit. Today, we lift up one of our own, Jane Neary, who continues in the hospital. We pray that you would be with Jay as well as he loves and supports her. We pray too, Lord, for those who begin this new year with grief, with the pain of a deep loss. Bring your comfort and care into their lives. Lord, we lift these prayers and all of the prayers that are on our hearts as we connect with you and are united with you in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Set 
to let the light of Christ shine in you and shine through you into the world. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you now and always. Amen.